Shalom everyone, it's Call to Eye, it's Tuesday at noon, and we will discuss this parsha, Parashat Lech Lecha, that we will read this week. But before we will deal with the parsha itself, I would like to talk a little bit about a phenomena that I think don't, no one really likes. No one really wants to be the odd guy in the group. We always try to fit in. We always try to blend into the group. And uh, it's really a very comfortable feeling that you're not different than anyone else, that you can share the same things, the same jokes, the same history, the same stories, to share maybe the same inspirations and dreams, and not to feel like, the, again, the odd guy in the group. So therefore, when you look at our Parsha, it seems to be very, very difficult to understand. Hashem commands Avraham, לך לך מארצך וממולדתך ומבית אביך אל הארץ אשר הרקע. Live, go. Your country, your birthplace, your mentality, your society, your friends, your parents, your family, everyone that you knew, and just go. Exclude yourself. Go away. And then, and only then, you will be able to form and to establish a new nation. And my question is, why is it? Why is it that Avram was not able to create this nation in his own birthplace? Why did he need to leave? And, you know, we can't say that God was concerned that they will hurt Avraham because God can protect him if that's the case. I think there is something much deeper, much stronger, much more educational to us, for us to learn from this first commandment, Lech Lecha, you shall leave, you shall go. When we think about Judaism, when we think about our tradition, when we think about the Abrahamic tradition, or when we fast forward to the time of Moshe, to the time of Moses, we see something very interesting. We see a common denominator, a common thread between Avraham and Moshe. Moshe also had to fled, had to flee from his society. When he thought that injustice was done and he killed the Egyptian man, he was basically, did something great. But two Jews told on him, and he had to go away, to go to Midian. And it's very interesting. Moshe did not try to convince those people that they did something wrong. He just fled. He went. And he went by himself. For many years, he was by himself. Why is it? I think there are a few reasons to this commandment and this concept. First and foremost, one of the major messages I think that was sent to Avram as well as to Moshe. Sometimes you do the right things, but as there is the saying, no good deed go without being punished. Sometimes you do the right thing, but people don't appreciate it. The society do not understand it. The society may even exclude you, but that's fine. You should never not do the right thing because of the consequences. Avraham did the right thing. Avraham broke the idols in his father's story according to our tradition. Avraham was able and courageous enough to stand up against the entire society and say, you are not right. There is one God. We need to be more righteous to try to find a way to be more kind to each other. And it cost him a lot. Moshe did the right thing. He did the right thing in Egypt, and he did the right thing in Midian. Sometimes, in the short term, doing the right thing may not be the right, the popular thing to do. But in the long run, it's the right thing to do. So that's the first message. The second message is, is for us as Jews, for all those decades and all these millennia and all our history, we did things that maybe were not so popular, but we tried to do the right thing, even if it costs us to be lonely, 
Not that we want to be excluded. Not that we want to run away from other people and from other dreams and other aspirations. But if it does not fit to our beliefs, if it does not fit to what we really know it's right and, and true, we shouldn't give a hand to it. We should not participate in it. Even if it costs us that we will need to leave our country, our birthplace, and our families. This is a very strong message. It's not an easy thing to be a leader and to stand up for what is right. But it is so needed, especially nowadays. Nowadays, it seems to be that the right thing to do is the most popular thing to do. And it seems to be that leaders, instead of leading, are always trying to look to see what the people want them to do. And as we know, people have different motives, different agendas. We expect our leaders. We expect the people that lead our congregation, our community, our nation, our world, to make decisions based on what is right, even if it's not so popular. And this is the message to Abraham. Was that a very difficult thing for him to leave everything? For sure. Was that the right thing to do in the short term? Probably not, because I'm sure Avram was mocked by the people in his times, saying, look at him, he had to run away from here. But he did the right thing in the long term. He gave us, his descendants, the tools, the mechanism, the strength to do the right thing, even if it's very costly, even if we had to leave, even if we had to abandon what we build. It's a complicated message to complicated times. But we need to learn from Abraham that in the long term, as God promised him, and you will be a blessing to all people. God did not say to him, and you will be blessed. It's not about me. It's about me being a blessing to others. And there is a long way to get there. And it's a long journey. It's a difficult one, a complicated one, but worthwhile in the long term. So may us take this lesson and be, may be willing to make this sacrifice for a long-term solution, for something that will be beneficial for all of us and making the decisions that we make for the right purpose, not for a popularity contest, but rather for the benefit of all. Thank you.